Good afternoon. My name is Mike Taylor, and I work at Elsevier Labs, where I am a uh, research specialist. One of my research areas is in altmetrics. Uh, if you're using Twitter, please tweet. Uh, we're using the combination of uh, altmetrics hashtags and UKSG live hashtags. Uh, it's a really good way of asking us questions, and it's a really good way of paying instant judgment on uh, being on uh, whether we're doing a good job or not. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is to tell you what altmetrics are. Maybe you know, maybe you don't know. Um, what we're talking about here are ways of looking at how often people are sharing scholarly work at uh, an article level. What it's not is the interpretation or the meaning of what these different things mean. So altmetrics is accumulated when people do things with citations. It's when they take a DOI and they link about it, blog about it, uh, put it on Twitter, use it in Mendeley or Zotero, one of these citation managements. It's not necessarily a measurement of people who are talking about work, but it's a way of sharing a reference. And when we talk about sharing a reference, we believe that, that also means that people are reading about it or consuming it or saving it in different kinds of ways. So it gives us a view which has a much, uh, is much closer to the user than our regular citations, formal citations and journals are. are. It's quicker than that, as anybody who has been to the Mendeley presentation will have heard. Um, they believe, and there is evidence to suggest, that the number of times people take a, a, a share an article in Mendeley, bookmark, reference an article in Mendeley, they reckon that's a good guide to where the ultimate citation counts are going to go to. Now, for me, talking about altmetrics is uh, it's a tricky one because it's a little bit like sitting, standing here and telling you that I'm going to tell you a fairy tale, a fairy tale, and not being allowed to go beyond uh, once upon a time there were three bears that lived in the wood. Because it's really early days. The, the term altmetrics was coined, I think, two and a half years ago. Um, since then, we've had a number of uh, uh, tools that have been built up. And over the course of the last two and a half years, what we've seen is an increase in the number of sharing tools, the number of social tools, the amount of tweets, and so on. So at the moment, it's really early days. I go on later in my presentation to talk about uh, how long, um, how, how many more things we have to do in, in the world of altmetrics. But I also want to take this opportunity to tell you why I think that everybody should be interested in where this is going to, and what the relationship is between social usage of um, scholarly materials and social impact and scholarly impact as well, and how that might map onto uh, research work, um, research funding, and open access. So the next slide is the obligatory slide about what Elsevier is doing. Um, if you have been to Scopus at some stage in the last 10 months, you will have seen you, you will have the opportunity to see a multicolored donut shape on the right-hand side where there are articles that have got uh, social metrics. Uh, this is uh, an application which is provided to us from altmetric.com, and um, it gives an indication of whether number of tweets, number of shares, number of mass media mentions have occurred in articles. Um, I was asking altmetric.com, um, how often this has been viewed, and the answer is, well, it's in the millions of times. So over the course of the last nine, ten months, when it became a mandatory tool on Scopus rather than an optional tool on Scopus, then it's been seen many, many times, and many people, quite a reasonable percentage of people, click through to find out more information about it. As, a, as an organization, we're really interested in what altmetrics are. Um, we have a number of platforms where we publish articles about the work that we're doing internally. We have a bibliographic department um, and numerous uh, doctorates who work in this area. And I work alongside them as Elsevier Labs in forming the, the research that Elsevier does into it. Much of our research is published in, uh, on researchtrends.com and elsevierconnect.com and in the editor's update and so on. So I think, think the thing that I want to show you next is what the altmetrics movement um, thinks about altmetrics. Um, because there's no doubt that when we talk about Facebook shares and Twitter, Twitter feeds and so on, there's 
a great deal of uh, difference between whether people think this is a really important thing that's worth studying, that should be taken as a scholarly subject in itself and folded into bibliometrics and the com computation of impact factor, or whether this is something which actually mm, doesn't really matter at all because who cares whether people are tweeting about something or not. So um, when we look at the, the manifesto uh, on altmetrics.com, org, not altmetric.com, two different things. Um, we can see here that we're talking about producing real life systems based on usage patterns. We're being able to, um, rather than just examine the formal, the formal impact versus citation counts, we can look at more uh, a diverse scholarly ecosystem. And it gives us a better idea of what impact looks like. And one of the projects that I'm working on is to take regular snapshots of altmetric data of scholarly materials. So we can, over the course of time, take a, a um, report and, and, and research on what scholarly impact looks like. So when a big story happens as a consequence of primary material, and I look into one of these later in my presentation, we'll be able to model the patterns of information and who influences who and uh, how, how a story travels through, through the media. But ne needless to say that not everybody is positive about um, altmetrics. And in fact, some people say some really derogatory things. Um, I'm not going to uh, read that out. Um, yeah, it's, it's fair to say that there are two sides of a spectrum, and uh, Professor Calhoun's uh, opinion is another one. OK, so this is the donut I mentioned. Um, there are many tools uh, that look at the social impact of scholarly uh, work and come back and report it uh, via uh, graphics and um, downloadable reports. Altmetric.com is the one that's used on Scopus. Um, and it has these very colorful donuts, and uh, um, there's this eye-catching number in the middle, which I'm not sure exactly what that means, but the bigger it is, the, the, it's sort of it's a, an aggregation of the number of carrots. Um, the more colors they have shows different diversity. The colors reflect different things. So if you look at uh, the blue color there, it there says uh, 289 tweets. Um, and we've got one news outlet, seven science blogs, and so on. So altmetric.com is very uh, easy to use. You take a line of code and you put it on your site. It's a commercial organization. The site, the, the tool, rather, that I tend to use is one called impactstory.org. Um, and impactstory.org does not have a colorful donut. I, I think they should have probably gone for some kind of cupcake analogy. Um, not because I'm obsessed with cakes, although I feel like it sometimes, um, but because people like the, the color of it. But what Impact Story does is a different view of it. Rather than showing the diversity of impact, they have uh, the, the founders of Impact Story, which is a not-for-profit, um, have done uh, research in an attempt to classify the kinds of social information to group them together. So you will see um, up here that there is a button on here that says saved and another one on there that says discussed. And there are different flavors. What the, the, Their interpretation of social usage of scholarly material is that there are different kinds of flavors of material. People do different kinds of things with research. And their tool uh, classifies the raw data and shows a, a, a relatively easy visual um, of what it is to what, what it is that um, their research would indicate they do. And if you hover over the saved or the discussion button, it will tell you the provenance of, of the data. The great thing about um, tools like Impact Story is that they're freely available to anybody. And if you have a list of DOIs, you can just plug it into Impact Story and get the altmetrics for yourself. And that's really cool, because it means that as publishers, um, we don't have to do anything. If people want to look at, um, research, uh, at the social impact or the social reach of uh, the research we publish, they can do it themselves. And in, in a way, that's the problem, because everybody can do it themselves. Um, and that means it's, it's a very democratic thing. This is something that um, we can either get involved with or not. It is very much up to publishers and other organizations about whether they do it. Um, it is very easy to be involved in altmetrics. It's a young organization. It's a very open organization. And it's very easy to use them, too. Uh, altmetric.com and impactstory.org are easy to use, very easy to get on your site. If you have a website that has journals on there, there is no reason to not have altmetrics on there, unless you think it's unless you're of the same opinion as David Calhoun and you think it's uh, complete rubbish. Um, 
So th this will be an example. I was going to do uh, a live demonstration. Um, sadly, without my laptop, I'm not going to do a live demonstration. But uh, I was going to take two competing journals on uh, hypertension, the American Journal of Hypertension and the Journal of the American Society of Hypertension. And I was going to take the lists of the last articles, which are represented here as their DOIs, and to plug them into impact story. So you can see just how quick it is. You don't need to get permission from anybody. The articles don't need to be open access. You don't need to have a subscription to anything. All you need are the DOIs. And Crossref has a very natty tool where you can automatically set up a report that gives you lists of DOIs that have been regularly recently published in journals. So there's a whole infrastructure here that can be automated. Anybody can get into the business of looking at altmetrics and reporting on it and finding out what it means. So uh, the, the, big, the big question is why we should, as publishers, be involved in altmetrics. Um, it is a, a complex um, series of questions. For my man, money, there are a number of reasons. We know that different disciplines have different kinds of working patterns, they have different kinds of citation patterns. But when all we know is formal citation rates, we don't have, a, what we don't have is a clear picture of how different researchers use different kinds of articles and how they propagate them informally within their, their working groups. And okay, so Altmetrics doesn't give us the entire picture of how people work, but it gives us a snapshot, it gives us more information about how people work. But for my money, one of the biggest areas is going to be on how we relate science to social impact, scholarly research to social impact. As we know, this is involved in the REF project. It's a big element of the REF project. And I believe that people are going to start requiring social impact uh, metrics and that publishers are going to be asked to, asked to report on what it is they do for their APCs and what it is they do to make research accessible. And Altmetrics gives us, as publishers, a set of tools that we can use and start to research and find out what works and what doesn't work and move on like that. Because open access is, as we are all aware, more than just sticking a PDF on a website. I'm going to rapidly run through a story before handing you over to Paul. Two weeks ago, there was a story called uh, the five pound spit test for cancer, as it was um, charmingly known on the Daily Mail. Um, it was based on primary research. It came out of Nature. Nature did a great deal to make it an extremely accessible web story and to make the primary research uh, well known. Um, it's a really interesting story because it's one that has an impact on very many people, probably all families, and that it's one that's going to find its impact in, uh, in the Brit British uh, um, landscape through the NHS and through the various medical councils and so on. And what I did was I took the DOIs of the paper that underpinned this research. This is the altmetric view of it, lots of nice colors going on there. This is the impact story um, view again, quite a few references, shares, and so on. But a lot of these figures are really quite small. So the social exchange of the actual primary research is quite limited. And in fact, if you plot this on a graph of the number of um, times that this is mentioned, um, those long titles down the bottom, they're all the, uh, the, the references to, the social references to the actual papers that were the basis of this news story. And then at the top there you have the BBC and the Guardian, um, both of which were getting almost 1,000 people tweeting, sharing, and so on. So there's quite a big cutoff here um, between how, um, how story gets propagated and how it gets referenced. And one of the things that is a little bit disappointing from my point of view is that most of the news stories that had all the coverage had no links back to the original research. And in fact, the BBC and The Guardian were the only two websites that I found that at least pointed back to a meaningful page that Nature had set up to hold links back to the original papers. So you have this difficult d issue that, um, that the social impact isn't necessarily linked to the original research. Rather, it's a, a meme, an idea that flows through, th flows through society at a current time. And if you look further beyond the references to the original primary research, we see that there are hundreds of comments on The Guardian's website. I have to say, nearly all of them were rubbish. And 100 comments on the Daily Mail, which were also 
entirely rubbish. Um, but there were lots of people talking about it, and they weren't, unfortunately, talking about it using hashtags that specifically related to the original research, but rather really generic hashtags. So we have an issue here that if we are to use an altmetric type uh, system to look at the wider picture of how we measure social impact, how we create reports for REF for, for open access publishing, then we need to do a bit more work. As I say, the current state of altmetrics is very much point one. Um, because of the, the because of the number of uh, limitations that the systems have in place, when it gets more interesting, we're going to see it looking more like uh, a little bit more like web analytics. But we're looking at idea analytics. Um, I'm coining a term, semantometrics, um, because the kind of thing that I want to do are uh, to to be able to cluster ideas, to be able to track ideas as they propagate down. So on the basis of primary research, what happens to the ideas that are founded in that primary research? And how do they travel? And how can publishers do better and improve the ways in which we um, communicate uh, ideas and findings into, into to having a social impact? These are, are relatively easy things to do. These are known technologies. And there are more things we can do. So I would say to you that you should be involved in altmetrics now because the lift is there, it's at the ground floor, it's a very easy thing to get involved with, it's a very open thing to get involved with, but we have a lot of work to do to make it a very meaningful uh, system that can enable us to do the social reporting that uh, we're all going to be obliged to do as a consequence of the changing landscape of scholarly publishing. We need to do more research, we need to find out how different disciplines work. We need to find out about the hidden research and hidden communication. So where people are taking our PDF files and emailing them to people, we can't track those. But what can we do to track, the, track those ideas and how can they travel? We need to answer Professor Calhoun's um, query about gaming. There's plenty of research that indicates that GIF uh, is relatively easy to game, even though it's uh, done at a high level and is done through uh, engagement rather than necessarily getting your mates to tweet. But um, nevertheless, this is something that needs to be answered. We need to understand the footprints of what, res what uh, reasonable uh, social communication looks like and what less reasonable um, communication looks like. So we have a whole bunch of research to be done. One of the things that Elsevier Labs is involved with is doing that research and then supporting people who wish to do that research and publishing the results on it. And this is the end of my slide, which is to say that we are only at the beginning. We are at the second, maybe the third stage of understanding uh, impact um, and social reach of primary research. We have a, a good way to go. And I hope that as many people as possible are involved in this. I very much want this to be a movement which is open and democratic and not proprietary and owned by one company or another company. Thank you. Hello. Um, this has been a kind of uh, really interesting conference for me. Uh, my name is Paul Groth, and I'm a computer scientist. And it's fantastic to walk around the, uh, the booths over there and see all these people who fundamentally, I think, are trying to make my life easier, right? To communicate my stories, to handle my research. And um, I'm actually one of the co-authors of the Altmetrics Alt Manifesto that you saw. And I'm a really big fan of altmetrics, but I want to start out my um, kind of presentation talking to you about what you shouldn't use altmetrics for and actually how bad they actually are right now. So I want to start with this quote. So it took approximately a generation for bibli bibliographic citation measures to achieve acceptability as a measure of academic impact. Right? So 20 years. Right now, we're just getting out to the point where people are going from journal impact factors to H indexes as measures of performance, as measures of impact. So I think it's going to take a long time, and there's a lot more research to be done before you can use altmetrics for research impact. That's just the case. So what altmetrics are really bad at is this. If you have that altmetric score that we saw, that means nothing. You cannot rank, right? 
you cannot rank with alt metrics. There's nothing to say what an alt metric means with respect to social reality, with respect to people actually knowing anything about what you do. Right? So you can't use alt metrics for ranking. Don't do it. These are a bunch of tools. You're not supposed to read it, but these are um, uh, tools that do alt metrics. So as Mike was saying, there's lots of these tools out there available. You can use them right away. And this is a fantastic report from um, the people who do the Leiden uh, University rankings. And this is a report called User Users, Narcissism, and Control. And if you go read this report, what they come and they did this analysis of all these altmetric tools, they come to this conclusion. Uh, the main problem is that none of the new tools we reviewed meet crucial requirements for data quality and indicator construction. This prevents them from currently being usable in the context of research evaluation and assessment. Don't use them for ranking, right? It doesn't really tell you how good you're researchers are, and you can't compare them. Don't use altmetrics for ranking. So that's kind of a negative, a fairly negative view of altmetrics. Um, I will say that I don't think it's going to take 20 years for, act, for us to actually prove that altmetrics does measure something. And we're actually starting that research now. And I, with social science colleagues of mine, we're doing that kind of research. So for example, we've shown that your presence on social media correlates to uh, measures of performance. So if you're on LinkedIn, you're likely to have a higher H index. Yeah, we've shown that in a study of computer scientists. Uh, you're starting to see surveys about the presence of scientists on Twitter and what they do. You're starting to see really interesting uh, uh, research around the correlation between kind of classical uh, citation measures and altmetrics. And what we're also seeing is that we're seeing some sort of gap between uh, what the altmetrics measure and what traditional citation measures measure, actually. And that gap is what's very interesting. Because if they perfectly were perfect in correlation, then your altmetrics wouldn't be describing something new. So you want something where they correlate, but not completely perfectly. But these are all the kinds of studies that are going on right now in cytometrics, right? So social, social studies of science. We're, there's more and more of these kinds of studies and more and more research pro projects on it. There's um, a new from the assist, there was a bulletin talking about altmetrics. Uh, there's a whole PLOS collection on altmetric papers. So the research is being done and I'm really excited about it. So I don't think it will take 20 years for us to prove those kinds of correlations. It may take two, three, four, five years before that can be done. But right now, today, you can't use altmetrics for ranking. So why, as publishers and librarians, would you be interested in altmetrics at all, right? What's the point? So yeah, why would you be interested in altmetrics? I'll introduce you to Steve. Um, Steve's a friend of mine. He's a um, computer science lecturer at University of Manchester. And his expertise area is actually computer graphics. And you can see that his, um, he's a pretty, pretty good researcher, right? H index of 19, right? Uh, about 1,000 citations. So he's on above average. He's not computer scientist, right? We're, so if you look at biomedicine, all their citations are going to be a lot higher, right? But he's a, he's a good researcher, really solid in image, um, in user interfaces and in kind of computer graphics. That's his expertise area. But one of the things that um, he kind of has a hobby in is doing interesting research communication tools, right? And that's something that he's been trying to profile himself in a bit. But he doesn't have a long history of being somebody who does these sorts of tools. So he's a computer graphics guy, and he wants to go into a completely new domain. And he wants to sh somehow show that what he's doing in this new domain is actually interesting. 
And what he does is actually interesting. So this is one of his pa uh, papers, Defrosting the Digital Library, Bibliographic Tools for the Next Generation Web. And so what's really interesting here is this has 64,000 total page views, right? And this is a fairly recent paper. Um, when did he publish this? It's a couple years ago. Um, and the thing is, is with that metric, he can tell a story to potential funders, to potential people who are interested in what he does, right? That says, look, what I'm doing is having impact. So that's my kind of claim going forward. What alt metrics are good for are for researchers to tell a particular story at the individual level and provide evidence that what they're doing is interesting in a different way, right? So it's not about ranking and it's not about comparison. It's about having evidence that I'm interesting. And so providing that is really crucial for your researchers, whether they're publishing with you or whether they're using your library, is that researchers have to tell more and more stories to different people. They have to tell it to their own communities, but they have to tell it to their funders. They have to tell it to the community at large. In my own uh, work area, two of my projects are public-private partnerships. So we have to really be able to say, well, why is this interesting? And we need the evidence to support our claims, to tell our story. And alt metrics is one thing that you can help us provide, give, to, to be able to tell those stories, right? So stories. And what's interesting is that there's been some research by Jason Prim that kind of shows that essentially um, different uh, alt metrics help you tell different parts of the story. They don't completely overlap with citations. And again, like Mike was saying, they're much faster. So if you're going to do something with uh, funding, then it may be quicker to have some of these alt metrics to help tell your uh, funding proposal story, right? And so another very concrete example of this is, um, I don't know if you know, in the ref in the UK, you now have to do, um, what they call impact case studies, right? So you have to essentially write why your particular research had some uh, societal relevance or affected business in some way. And giving your researchers these kinds of metrics will help them provide proof for those kinds of um, impact uh, assessments or impact reports that they have to write for the ref. Okay. So stories, that's what alt metrics are good for. So I'll give you another example of where alt metrics are really interesting and really useful, especially as we see the kind of disintermediation of content. So content going everywhere. So this is an example from last week, from my own work. So one of my postdocs, he's been working really hard on a particular piece of research, and we were really, we were really excited about it, right? I really wanted to get it out there and let people see it. So he finally finished up the paper, and we we're going to submit it to um, the major journal in our field. But I didn't want to wait for um, uh, wait till it had been peer reviewed to get it out there. I just wanted to get it out there. So the first thing I did was I stuck it up on archive, so as a preprint, right? And then the second thing, it's a really long paper. It's like 22 pages, and it's full of, uh, it's really cool. It has like all sorts of mathematical formulas where we do proofs of, of things, and we have experimental evaluation. And I would love to talk to you about this, but you, you'd, probably, you'd probably go to sleep on me. But what we did was we, I wrote a blog post about it that kind of took out the essential pieces of information from that paper and put it out there because I know some practitioners in my area might be interested in it, but they don't want to wade through 22 pages of preprint article. So I put that out there as blog post, and then about two days later, I had 25 uh, retweets of this article and nine Facebook likes, right? And so that gives me some idea that uh, actually, people are really interested in this. 
But now what's going to happen is I've submitted this paper to a journal. It's going to go through the standard review process that it should go through. And it will appear on the journal web page uh, eventually, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, but the thing is, is there will be a disconnect between what's on that journal site, my blog post, and my preprint version, right? And in fact, all of that content, right, should be aggregated together, and I should essentially be able to know how good my content is, even though it's spread across multiple places. And I need to know the metrics that says, oh, look, the blog post that led to this journal article those metrics should be included in those journal articles. And so this is what I think you're going to see. You're going to see more and more content exactly like this. And having metrics, alt metrics, is really important for this kind of content. So this is the, the picture. At the top is your journal article or even your book. But what you're seeing is this huge mass of other content that's being exposed um, and made available. And all those things get measured. They get tweeted, they get shared, they get sent through email, they get posted on mailing lists, they get put in press releases, they get posted on Figshare, right? And all that, all the things that people use that content for should be tracked and it should be aggregated. So I think one of the things that um, it would be very cool for this community to do is support my, the reuse of my content. And Altmetrics provides the means to measure that content. So this is an example, right? So the Journal of Ecology uh, now require a tweetable abstract for their journals. Or another example is uh, PLUS um, Computational Biology now lets you publish a Wikipedia article and also um, get journal credits for it. So you actually go and write a Wikipedia article about your flavor of the month. It gets peer reviewed. It gets published both in Wikipedia and in the Journal of Computational Biology. So what you're seeing is content being spread everywhere because we have to, as researchers, actually get our content in front of different audiences. And for that, you need these kinds of metrics. So my plea is to really engage with these alt metrics uh, to surface statistics. Because the statistics, even though you can't compare, they can let you tell this sort of story. So this is an example uh, on Figshare. And this is actually a poster right, that has a corresponding uh, paper associated with it. But the thing is, is 64 people have viewed this poster. And that should be part of that paper's credit, that people have looked at it. And if I want to say that people are interested in my topic, I can use that 64 views as part of my story that I'm doing something interesting. What you guys have as librarians, as a journal, as publishers, is you actually have access to fairly high quality statistics, right? You have access to all the usage statistics coming, which I know a lot of you already expose. But I suspect you have other kinds of interesting um, kinds of metrics behind your quote unquote firewall. So for example, what do your reviewers think of particular articles? Right? That would be interesting. Or the percentage of acceptance um, in a particular subdomain that you do within a journal, for example, would be really interesting statistics. So I don't know all the kinds of metrics that you have. And even in your uh, in, in institutional repository, I expect you have lots of these metrics. But surfacing those, making those available to authors and content providers is really powerful, because then it allows your, your content providers to tell the story that they need to tell. So kind of concluding and wrapping up, for me, I think it's clear that Altmetrics is still developing. We need to do a lot more research before you can use it for research, like pure research assessment, right? But it is useful for telling individual stories, right? Um, your content that's either hosted in, you, that you publish or it's in your institutional repository is 
in a network, right? It doesn't stand on its own. And so this is the thing you have to realize. It's no longer that the journal stands by itself, but in fact, there's a network of content that authors essentially are pulling together in order to produce your journal, but then they're also ripping content out of their journal articles, putting it on their blog, sending it to their, uh, their um, PR part of their department, these kind of things. So my plea to you is help me tell my story, right? And one way to do that is through these metrics. So I think we have uh, about six or seven minutes for uh, kind of questions or discussion. We'd love to talk about that. <laughs>